Welcome to the Tolkien Collector's Guide YouTube channel, where we gather experts from around the world to discuss Tolkien's books and the people who read them. I'm Guru Loke, and with me are Trotter and Mr. Andre. Hey everyone, we're here today talking with Iriloke, Jeremy Edmonds, who is the founder and Thane of the Tolkien Collector's Guide. How are you doing, Jeremy? Good, great. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I love uh, working with you guys. I love the website. I love Tolkien Collecting. So uh, this is clearly a passion of mine. I've been a reader since the mid seventies. Uh, my parents had a set of the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit uh, from, from the sixties in their bookshelves. And I, I would read them over and over again. Uh, it was probably the early eighties when I was starting to build my own library of books. I bought a set of the paperback Michael Herring covers. I don't know if you remember those Chad, uh, uh, it's got the Fabio looking, uh, Legolas is one of them. Oh. They, they are, they're memorable. They're great. Like, they're great. like them or not. Uh, I probably I have, those, have, I have those locked away in a, in a, in a dark space somewhere. Oh, I have a box of them as well. Cause I like them. <laughs> I, I probably have three or four sets at this point. Uh, sadly, my, the first set I bought with my own money fell apart from, from reading and rereading, but I did replace them. And there are a couple of different variation. So those are, those are one of the keystones or, or foundation stones of, of my collecting. Uh, and then over the years, uh, it's expanded uh, tremendously. Uh, there's a significant number of works by Tolkien uh, with his academic publications, his poetry, uh, other things that uh, uh, not a lot of people are aware of, but I find fascinating. Uh, but the heart of my collection is the Lord of the Rings. That's that's my favorite work of his. I, I'm focused on trying to find different editions of that. There's textual variations. There's different cover artists. There's translations. Um, the maps um, are, are fascinating to me. That's one of the first things that drew me into my parents' Lord of the Rings sets was those fantastic fold out maps that, oh. that you could actually read the book and have the map, you know, on the table or in your lap as, as you were reading through the books. So, uh, that, that was something that no one else had really done, you know, back, uh, back in the day. And of course, so many fantasy books are absolutely have to have a map at this point, but, uh, the, the, the Tolkien maps and the details that, that Christopher had put into them and how they related to the story was was fascinating to me. And of course, that's led to collecting maps themselves. Uh, there are artists who have done renditions of those maps. There's posters from uh, Pauline Baines and Barbara Remington and other uh, unofficial publications of maps that to me are fascinating and beautiful and and belong up on on my walls as art they're they're fantastic uh, since then uh it's probably been close to 20 years now that we've been running the website um uh for for Tolkien collector's guide and meeting other people who love his books uh, who love his works who also enjoy collecting them or just enjoy reading them uh, is really where my passion is now, I think, with finding other people who are interested, helping them out, helping them learn what to collecting is, what how books are published, what good quality books are, how to find rare materials, how to connect with each other and do trades and everything is uh, the, the community of collecting and specifically talking collecting is is wonderful to me and, and is where my heart is now yeah well that's that's fascinating i think um that's very interesting really is to, to, to look at how uh, how people get into uh into collecting but why is why just talking now why not somebody else it's it's the only book i would say for me the lord of the rings specifically that I, as a child, and then going through schooling and and growing up into 
career and everything else that I would constantly return to and reread. Uh, it, it's at least once a year for a couple of decades. Uh, it's a little bit slower now just because I'm trying to keep up on reading all the other publications of, of, of books about Tolkien and scholarly works and, and fan publications and things. So uh, I, I still get that love of reading, even though it's not the primary text as often, but I still do reread it. And I have never found that with, with other titles. I'm, I'm a big fan of fantasy. Uh, I've enjoyed reading hundreds of other authors, uh, but, but, as far as coming back to and rereading and still getting emotional reactions and still learning new things, it, it really has been Tolkien's writings that, that pull me back like that. It's interesting that uh, you said that the maps pulled you in because uh, Trotter said the same thing about about what some you know something that brought him into Tolkien. Uh, Jeremy, I know you're into uh, fandom as well. I know you have a pretty big fanzine collection. Um, what are some of the, what are some of the more rare fanzine things that you, that you have? So, yeah, it's, uh, I, I, I was drawn into learning about early fandom, um, fairly early on in, in my collecting and, and, uh, interactions with, with the community. Uh, it's so the, you know, the earliest fanzines were coming out that mentioned Tolkien in the late fifties. Uh, there was an explosion of interest in the, the mid sixties when the paperbacks came out in the United States really kicked the, the whole fan community and fanzine, uh, publications into high gear, uh, right around 65 or so. Uh, and then up through the early seventies, they've obviously tapered off as, as fan communities have, have moved online, uh, and, and social media has taken over, but there, there's still publications coming out now even from uh, a lot of important communities a lot of important groups that uh, that so it's still still a collectible interesting uh facet of the tolkien world uh, uh as far as my own collection uh my focus has primarily been on trying to find fanzines from uh the late fifties through, through the mid sixties, maybe the late 1960s. There's, there's a lot fewer of them. They're very hard to find and condition is, is critical for, you know, a lot of times these were printed on really inexpensive paper and with inks and reproduction techniques that were not meant to withstand more than a few months. They tend to fade. Yeah, I would assume they weren't built to last. <laughs> they were not built to last. Um, <laughs> Uh, so yeah, there's like, uh, I Palantir was a classic fanzine. It only had three or four issues. Uh, there is, uh, there's a couple of fanzines that were, uh, I have one, uh, that's all written in, in Tengwar. So it's completely, you have to understand Tolkien's writing systems in order to be able to read it at all. There's a hundred percent, no English. It's, uh, uh, a fascinating little glimpse into uh, how passionate these fans were back in the day. Um, what would you think is a is a gap in your collection at the moment? What, what's something that you'd really like to to get? So there's there's a couple of Lord of the Rings, um, like the super deluxe green leather three volume box set that uh, has the Alan Lee illustrations. There were 250 copies for the UK. And I think maybe they did another 250 for Australia, uh, but just the that, UK. That one's just There's the only UK. 250. So, so that one um, actually owned a copy uh, about 12 years ago uh, for a while and then sold it on uh, <laughs> to someone <laughs> Uh, you know, it's one of those things where you, I got an offer I couldn't refuse and, and I've regretted it <laughs> ever since. Uh, so I will track myself down another copy at some point. I think that the, the quality of what they put into offer. that, there you go. Uh, it's so, so that's the one that got away. Um, uh, I absolutely would love a, uh, a, a signed 
set of Lord of the Rings from Tolkien. So I keep my eye on those. Um, I, I fully expect to pay market rates. I'm not looking for a steal on that, but it's one of those things that'll be a lifetime of hunting and looking for one that uh, uh, that 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 can go onto my shelves. Um, and let's go for uh, what what sort of draws you into collecting different editions of the same book. So obviously, you know that I seem to collect masses of copies of the Hobbit. Why, why the Lord of the Rings? Why, obviously, if you have one copy of it, why do you need another one? So, the... the it's arms crossed. The, <laughs> the, <laughs> it's a silly question. Why? It's a silly why? Question. why do you need another one? It's a silly question. Oh, my goodness. I'm, <laughs> the, the Lord of the Rings uh, has gone through pretty heavy... Uh, editing when the second edition came out. So so I, th there's a pretty simple answer to say first edition text versus second edition. Um, if for those who have read through uh, Hammond, Hammond's bibliography that he did with uh, Anderson, the, the, the changes and the corrections that were made in early impressions and what Tolkien actually meant, and then Hammond and Skull have you know, done a lot of research on finding the, you know, the, the super correct text uh, and what, what the final uh, edition is that is probably never going to be fully settled. I think they've done an excellent job, but uh, the, the migration of the text or the changing of the text over the years in these printings, I find, I find that interesting. Uh, but I also find the, the illustration of it, which primarily for Lord of the Rings means the book covers, right? The, as far as official publications with illustrations, there's really only been the Alan Lee uh, illustrated editions and then very recently Tolkien's own illustrations were combined into that book. Uh, but as far as book covers, there've been hundreds of artists who have produced book covers, uh, especially if you're including international translations and different editions from different publishers. Uh, that I, I'm absolutely fascinated by you know, the choices they make and the variety of of how they choose to illustrate those scenes. So, so a large part of it really is the art that comes with it, and then the quality of the bindings, the the, the feel of a book, uh, just the physical presence of it, the smell of it, the, the binding quality, the cracking that you hear when you open a brand new book. Uh, as, as the binding settles in to, to being stretched and open. Um, and even when you get to like cheap paperbacks, and I'm not saying they're inexpensive nowadays, but they were made inexpensively. They were not meant to last. The, the, the materials they use are so different from like a high quality hardback that you can tell that you can feel it and the paper starts to get brittle with age and you, Kind of feel like an archaeologist like carefully leafing through these things to see what's inside and the same thing with fanzines you know they're they're not going to be reproduced they're, they are unique they're usually in the tens or dozens of copies ever made um and so when you find one and you want to read it you you have to be super careful and it's you can feel the the old paper just barely hanging in there and if it was mimeographed and it's that purple reproductive ink that's faded yes. to like super light blue uh, and you're struggling to read it and you know it's uh you remove the staple carefully so you can put it on a flatbed scanner and try and you know bring the text back out of the fadedness of it it's all of this i find fascinating is just kind of delving into the past and and reliving what fans were going through back then when Tolkien was alive and he was sending letters to these fans uh, and to now when we're all gathering together and chatting with each other and, and learning, uh, you know, about uh, how we all enjoy his works. Well, that was a, that was, that was a wonderful conversation. Thanks Jeremy for, for letting us in and giving us uh, some insight today. Yes. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for uh, having this chat with me.